You boys be quiet down there! Tokyo Xanadu is an action RPG by Falcom, released in 2015 in Japan for the PS Vita and later in 2016 for the PS4 as Tokyo Xanadu EX Plus. It's one of many Falcom games which bears the Xanadu name, though these Xanadu games are almost always totally unrelated to each other so don't worry if you haven't played any before. I have a confession to make about me and Tokyo Xanadu. Despite being a self-proclaimed die-hard Falcom fan, I totally skipped the Vita version of this game and waited until the PS4 version was released last fall. Then I proceeded to leave the game in its original wrappings for 9 months and played other games until I finally got around to playing it this month. I wasn't planning on doing a video on this game at all, but then I noticed that the English version of Tokyo Xanadu is scheduled to be released at the end of this month on Vita, so I thought this might be a good time for me to give my thoughts on EX+. This isn't intended to be a full review of the game as I haven't finished it yet, but I have played enough that I feel I can give my basic spoiler-free impressions so far. Before playing this game, the opinions I'd heard in Japan about Tokyo Xanadu were mostly neutral or negative. The game is often criticized for being a Persona ripoff, without having enough unique ideas of its own. Well, I've never played any of the Persona series, so I can't comment on that, but gameplay-wise, I would say this game is a combination of Falcom's two most popular series, Ease and Legend of Heroes. As a Falcom fan, this is, well, pretty great. You take the role of a high school student in Tokyo named Ko. Ko accidentally becomes involved with a parallel world, which can only be accessed through gates which appear around Tokyo, and can only be seen by certain people. His old friend Asuka seems to be quite familiar with this parallel world, and is part of a mysterious organization called Nemesis that protects the real world from the monsters of the parallel one. When you get to certain points in the story, Ko will be sucked into one of these gates, and Tokyo Xanadu will transform into an action game temporarily. You have a regular attack, many different kinds of special attacks, and you can instantly change to any character currently in your party with the press of a button. Each enemy is weak against attacks from a certain character, so you'll need to switch characters on the fly in order to attack enemies the most efficiently. Sound familiar? If you've played E7 or any later Ease games, then it definitely should. You can even do Adol's role here. So if you like Ease, then you should enjoy the action here too. Walking around the high school setting and the adventure parts, it didn't take me long to realize that this game uses the same engine as Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. I mean, look at this. If you've played either of the Trails of Cold Steel games, then this should look pretty familiar to you. If you liked those games and want more, then well, you should feel right at home here. And since the EX Plus version is a PS4 game, this is our first chance to see this engine running at 1080p and at a solid 60 frames per second. This makes it a good preview of what Trails of Cold Steel 3 will likely look like when it comes out on PS4. The other main difference between EX Plus and the original Vita version is that side stories have been added between the main episodes of the game as well as an after story at the end. These side stories include brand new dungeons and enemies, and even a new playable character. EX Plus also includes an added time attack and boss rush mode, as well as an additional difficulty setting and lots of other little additions you probably won't notice unless you play through both versions. I want to get back to talking about the main game though, so the rest of my review is going to apply to both versions of Tokyo Xanadu, not just EX Plus. I know I praised this game earlier for being similar to our favorite Falcom games, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to simultaneously criticize it for being maybe a bit too derivative. For starters, the cooking system is here, taken pretty much directly from the Trails series. Now I know that every Falcom game nowadays has to have a cooking system and all, but at this point it would actually be pretty refreshing to play a Falcom game that doesn't have a cooking system. It's like they didn't even think twice about it. Yes, of course the game has a cooking system. We can't make a game without a cooking system, that's preposterous! I'm sure there are lots of Falcom fans out there who love the cooking system in these games, but full disclosure, I'm not one of them. I usually ignore the cooking system, maybe crafting a few items here and there if they look useful, but I never bother trying to collect all the recipes or anything. And can you blame me? There are plenty of good items that you don't need to cook yourself. 
mastering the cooking system isn't required to finish any of these games. But well, at least there's no fishing in this game. Which is the other thing it seems all Falcom games have to have nowadays. Even Ease has fishing now. This game also has gems, which you collect by killing monsters in the dungeons and then exchange them for money at certain shops. Sound familiar? This is from the Trails series too. The point where I really lost it though, when I concluded that this game was nothing but a bunch of recycled Falcom ideas, is when I saw that this game has bonding events, where you're given a few bonding points and then you can talk to the characters of your choice in order to trigger these events and strengthen the relationship between Ko and the other characters. Now this is really just too much for me. I mean, why did they do this again? When you're not in the action stages, this game feels like a mission pack or a side story for Trails of Cold Steel rather than an original game of its own. Hey, I know a much better name for this game than Tokyo Xanadu, how about Tokyo Legend of Heroes? Again though, these might not be such bad things if you already love the other Falcom games this is based on, and know to expect that this game is going to be more of the same. Maybe if I had done more research on how similar this game is to Trails of Cold Steel before going in, I wouldn't have been bothered quite so much. Unlike other games from Falcom, this game takes place in the real world, although it is a fictionalized version of the real world. If you look closely at the logo, you can see that the kanji they used for Kyo in Tokyo is slightly different from the one which is normally used. This was done to indicate that the Tokyo this game takes place in is not supposed to be the real Tokyo, it's a fictionalized one. The game takes place in a fictional area of Tokyo called Morimiya City, which is based somewhat on Tachikawa City where Falcom is headquartered. You'll also frequently notice a tower in the background which looks kind of like the Tokyo Sky Tree, but this isn't the Sky Tree, it's called Akros Tower. Also in this version of Tokyo, a devastating earthquake that all but destroyed the city is supposed to have happened 10 years prior to the events of the game. Obviously no such earthquake happened in the real Tokyo 10 years ago. Personally, I can't help but think it might have been even more interesting to just use the real Tokyo and make it as close to the real thing as possible. Why not just choose a real area of Tokyo as the setting? Certainly, there must have been some other plot device they could have used instead of a fictional earthquake in order to achieve basically the same story. And this is going to be a rather harsh critique, but I just don't think that the story or theme of the game is very original. I like the settings and themes of games like Ease and Legend of Heroes, and I like the idea of a Falcom game that takes place in the real world, but this really feels like the plot for a mediocre late night TV anime show and one that I've already seen multiple times. Tokyo high schoolers live out their normal lives while also fighting in a parallel world? It's been done. What I'm trying to say is that the world of the game isn't very compelling. After I turn the game off, I don't find myself pondering the world or the plot. It's just kind of blah. Now finally getting back to the positives of this game. I like most of the character designs. They're similar to those of other recent Falcom games, so of course they're good. And this game is basically a harem anime, so the female characters had better damn well look good. Asuka is a nice looking character, and somewhat similar to Arisa from Trails of Cold Steel. I like the voice of the actress who plays Shiori. There's also this guy for the ladies, and... What the hell? It's a character from Trails of Cold Steel. They actually took the same character design, voice, and name and just put her in a different world. I knew it. This game is a Legend of Heroes side story. So anyway, I think it is safe to say that if you enjoyed Trails of Cold Steel and want more of the same, then you can't go too wrong with Tokyo Xanadu. If you haven't played Trails of Cold Steel yet, then buy that first. Tokyo Xanadu is a decent distraction to play between the Trails games. And who knows, maybe you'll learn something new during your education at Morimiya High School, like how to speak English. If my wish comes true, I want to become a bad, even if I lose everything else. Someday, I want to go to the place of memories with him. And if you want to learn more about the history of Falcom's earliest games, 
then you'll definitely want to check out my YouTube series PC88 Paradise, where I review games for one of the most popular Japanese PCs of the 1980s. Make sure to subscribe to Basement Brothers if you want to see more of my videos about Falcom and other Japanese game developers. Finally, don't forget to like and share this video if you enjoyed it. And if you're planning on buying Tokyo Xanadu, leave me a comment below to let me know which version and why. Thanks for watching.